to say we need a reboot on 2020 is just totally an understatement. We've been stuck at home. We've lived through a toilet paper, paper towel, and hand sanitizer shortage. And you've had to become a teacher on top of everything that you were already doing. So it's no wonder that you're probably feeling stressed out, anxious, and you're mentally and emotionally tapped out. But since you're listening to this episode, that lets me know that you want to change that you want to be more productive, and you definitely want to be less stressed. Where you are in for a treat, because today I'm going to be chatting with Sandy Swartz, who's a mom of two, a science writer, positive psychology and environmental expert, and mom blogger behind the Happy Science Mom. Sandy has written hundreds of articles on parenting, wellness, environmental issues, and outlets like Chicken Soup for the Soul, Scary Mommy, Motherly, Very Well Family, and numerous regional parenting magazines throughout the United States and Canada. Her site is even included on Feedspot's list of the top 100 mom blogs every mommy must read in 2020. She is currently working on her first book about how nature can help children feel happier and calmer. And who doesn't want that? So let's go ahead and jump into my conversation with Sandy, which is episode number 32. Welcome back to the More Than Capable Mompreneur podcast. I'm Shannon Baker, a coffee-loving mompreneur that started as a virtual assistant and turned into a total systems geek. And I want to help you shift your mindset and embrace your worthiness while creating systems in your business so you can be more productive and build success on your own terms without the mom guilt. Are you loving that? Well, I hope you're ready for real conversations that will help you beat the perfectionists inside, rediscover your strengths, and up-level your self-love in the mom cracks of time so you can stop letting fear hold you back because you are enough and you do enough. We are more than capable mompreneurs. So grab your cup of coffee, some sparkling water, or pour a glass of your favorite wine, and let's dive in. Well, today we are chatting with Sandy Swartz. So thank you for being with us today, Sandy. Thanks for having me. So Sandy, I found her online in one of the Facebooks that, Facebook groups that I'm in. And I really love the content that you share about how we can use nature, bring nature inside of our homes. And while you all can't see this gorgeous fall-like picture that's behind Sandy, I'm loving the feel that I'm getting from it, but I know that's your element and which is what we're going to talk about today and how we can bring nature into our homes, help us feel happier, calmer, and be more productive. But before we dive in, tell us a little bit about yourself, your family, and your journey. Sure. Um, well, thanks again for having me. I'm very excited to talk to you today, Shannon. I am, I've been blogging over at happysciencemom.com for over five years now, and I'm also a freelance writer, and I've been writing for the last several years about how children can use a toolkit to feel happier and calmer. And in, in, on my blog, I look at mindfulness, gratitude, kindness, such as community service, and I also have been focusing a lot more on the benefits of nature for our well-being. And it's kind of interesting because that takes me back to my initial career goals when I was an environmental studies major in college. And even before that, when I cleaned up my first river in high school and was part of the nature defense club. So nature and the environment has always kind of been my passion. And I ended up kind of switching gears a little bit as I went through infertility and was struggling with anxiety, with, with um, I guess, postpartum anxiety. And I started really searching for ways to feel happier and calmer naturally. And it all started with Gretchen Rubin's The Happiness Project book, which I highly recommend. And from there, I decided to start writing myself. And so my blog and, and my writings over the years have kind of been this compilation of a toolkit that I'm hoping that children or that parents can now use for their own children. And it's the toolkit I sure wish I had when I was a kid. I can look back at just that kind of kid who was stressed out a lot. And it took me until I had my own children to really address it and deal with it. So 
Now I'm going back to my roots and I'm really honing in on the benefits of nature to help us thrive, to feel happier and calmer. Great. Now, how exactly did you um, come to the point that you decided to create a specifically a happy science mom, which is your business, correct? Yes, that's part of my writing business because I also write for other publications. Uh, you can find me actually um, in over 60 regional uh, parenting magazines throughout the country and Canada. So depending on the, the month, I'm in different magazines and then some national publications as well and websites. And, and now on podcasts, which is really fun. <laughs> totally different way of, of communicating, which is exciting. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, it's really funny looking back. I, when I had a, my first, my, my first baby, my son, I was looking for something to do while he wasn't napping. I wanted to keep my, my brain active. And I started a blog way back then, which was, a, it was a 12 years ago when they were really archaic. And at the time, it's really funny. I was writing about, it was called savvy science mom and it was all about the questions like health issues of kids and babies but it was kind of like the negative angle of it and i actually had one of my my struggles is health anxiety so i kept asking all these scary questions about my kids and i realized this is probably not the best way to spend my time and so it took a little while for me to shift gears and to look at positive psychology which is all that study of happiness and what are the positive things we can do in our life to help us feel better instead of dwelling on all the negative health issues? <laughs> no, and, that, and that's great that you could, um, that you notice that one, because you're right, there's so much negative stuff we can find online. It's easy to get stuck in. We keep highlighting the negative. Um, but to take that and spin it and then incorporate your love of nature and environment, which really does boost our happiness, is really awesome. So Let's go ahead and dive into this topic because I can't wait to get some of your tips. So with moms now, because the kids are basically on their laptops or, you know, their computers most of the day, especially if they're doing distance learning for school. And even before this all happened, they were on some kind of electronic device most of the time, unless mom took it and said no screen time. So what are some of the issues? that you find are arising when there's too much screen time and sitting all day, which we even experience this as adults. Yeah, so, you know, the research shows that if we are just sitting all day staring at a screen, and especially if we don't have even a window to look out of, that we start to feel more sluggish and tired and we lose our creative juices and even, you know, some anxiety and depression can sneak in if, if this is an ongoing behavior. And as we know that we've heard many, many times from physicians that we need to get up and move around. So to take a physical break. So I want to build up upon that and say, well, not only should you get up and move around, but get up and move around outside. And if you can't quite do that, then at least get up and move around and look at a pretty nature photo on, your, on a screen or in a book or listen to something positive that, that uh, you know, lifts your spirits up because you know, our kids are really, you know, also all the social media and all the video games. It's not just the school, it's also after school and what they're doing. So it's really imperative, especially now that they, they get some outside time. Okay. Now for those of us, so like we're both on the East Coast, and we know uh, at the moment that this airs, or even when we're recording, it's the beginning of fall. So right now we can still, you know, go outside. The temperatures are pretty great. But what are, say, when there's either colder weather, when we're not able to go outside, or some people may live in like New York City, where there aren't many of those um, scenic type of areas, except for like Central Park or, or something like that. What are some ways, simple ways that we can bring nature into the home to help with those nature breaks? Sure. And I want to preface this by saying that one of my biggest goals in this work now is to reach the folks like you're talking about. Uh, you know, I, I, there are a lot of people that 
already talking to the the real crunchy parents and the, the ones who are already hiking and they already shop at REI and, and their whole life is camping and hiking. I want people who are stuck in their apartment buildings in, in urban environments to realize the power of, of, of nature and how it can heal them. So there are some really simple things. It could be getting a plant, you know, and you can get a plant at the grocery store. How about a bouquet of flowers? And the amount of activities you can do with your children with that bouquet of flowers, it, it really is extraordinary. So the other thing is that you want to kind of build this nature habit based on what your family or children are already interested in. So if you have a budding, a budding um, artist in the family, then think of what they can do with that bouquet of flowers from the grocery store. They can you know, dry the flowers and create a collage. They can write a poem. They can take photography. They can paint. They can draw. You know? And then if you have a, a, an athlete in the family, that child, it's easy to get them outside, you know, exercising and the sports and everything. So building the nature habit is kind of tapping into what you're already doing. So back to your question, if you're stuck inside, get to a window, right? You can do so much, whether it's stargazing in the evening, watching a storm, you know, if the, if, if it's a beautiful snowstorm. You know, it doesn't have to be a miserable gray day. You can transform that into a beautiful poem. Or if, again, if a kid is really creative, a play or a song about that snowstorm. Or you can play a game, you know, look for how many birds do you see out the window? So there's so many simple ways we can do that. And as far as actually making that space, this workspace that these kids are at all day long now, right? They can decorate, you can decorate their workspace with nature imagery. This can be their own artwork, or it could be Ansel Adams' pictures, you know, it could be go on Amazon and order some beautiful uh, paintings and photographs. And then if they have that in their workspace, they, it's almost like looking out the window, right? It gives them that serenity that that break that shift from their eyes away from the screen to that beautiful nature and those are very practical tips um because i mean like you mentioned earlier everybody's not outdoor people um and even with plants i used to be a plant killer did not have a green thumb i've developed a green thumb over you know being quarantined at home which is a good thing because now we have more plants in the house and you're right they do make such a huge difference for it to just be something so simple or even just going to buy a bouquet of flowers it just it brightens up the space as you mentioned and i really love the simple things you suggested if you can look out a window no matter where you live you have at least one window in a home where you can look out and see something outside it's just actually taking the time to notice the positive things in nature to help to shift our outlook, which then boosts our mood. Those are great. Thank you for sharing those with us, Sandy. So now we, we've got simple ways that we can bring nature into the house and take those nature breaks, decorate our workspaces, whether we're kids or adults. Now, how can we use these things to boost the family's productivity? So what's really fascinating is the science, the research that's out there, both on how nature helps boost our health and our happiness, both our physical health, our mental health. But there's also this research from Dr. David Strayer, who is a cognition and neural scientist out of the University of Utah. And he had this breakthrough study in 2012 that showed how time outdoors in nature leads to increased creativity and problem solving. So basically they did this experiment where they had a group of, this was a group of adults, and they went on a wilderness backpacking trip. And they tested, they did like these problem solving and creativity tests on, on these folks. And the ones who took the test a few days into the trip had a 50% boost in their creativity and problem solving capabilities versus the ones that were tested before the trip. So there was a huge improvement on how really their brains and, and 
you know, changed once they were immersed out in nature. And there's a few reasons for it. A lot of it has to do with how we feel, you know, restored and calmer when we're in a natural environment. And also our, uh, the sense of awe. You know, awe in itself is this really fascinating, positive emotion that they're just really trying to, you know, just getting a lot more science on now. But when we feel awe, we look at the world in, you know, we look at it in a more incredible way and it kind of gets us more curious and excited and, and motivated to want to do more. I mean, think about when your child sees a rainbow, you know, it just gets them going. You know, they, they want to paint the rainbow. They want to find out how they get to the end of the rainbow or why is it there? You know, where do the colors begin and end? And so, you know, nature kind of spurs all that curiosity and thinking. And that's great because really, you know, most of us, if you aren't a sciencey kind of person, we, we shift to um, more of a negative thought when we hear the word science or nature. Like you said, thinking, oh, well, I've got to go hiking or backpacking in the woods. And most of us are like, yeah, I'm not doing that. But <laughs> these are simple ways because we like the way that it makes us feel. We just don't like the methods, the popular methods for us to be able to benefit from it. So these are great, simple tips to help us to just bring that into our comfort zones, so to speak. We can bring what's outside inside without having to be in the full element. And who doesn't want to be more productive? Um, who doesn't want to be more positive? And you're right. I mean, we all are, no matter what age we are, when we see a rainbow after a big thunderstorm, you go on social media, you see tons of pictures of rainbows that they caught or the sunrise or the sunset we can see them looking out the window. And, and I never would have thought that that would, you know, be, while you know it's beneficial, it's not something that you stop and put the pieces together. But exactly. knowing you and talking to you has helped connect the dots, so to speak. So really shows why it's beneficial for us to incorporate this into our daily lives, especially for the children, because they're spending more time at home now than we are outside of the home. So this has been truly, truly helpful. So with all of that, and we get all this, these happy feelings, any other ways or things that we can do to use nature to reduce our stress and reduce those anxious feelings that we get sometimes? Yeah, I don't know about you, but Sometimes, like I said, you know, I'm a writer, so sometimes I get stuck on what I'm going to write about, of course, or I just kind of, I'm done sitting at the computer after three hours, and what am I going to do? And I try to get exercise, you know, five, six days a week. And I have noticed, you know, if I get stuck, I get in that writing rut or a block. If I just go for a bike ride or a walk, all of a sudden, the articles start writing themselves. You know, all these, all these ideas pop in my head. And you know, and you start to, if you really focus and be mindful of what's going on, you see the butterflies, you notice the pretty flowers. And, you know, if we can just instill that little trick into it with our kids, you know, take that lunch break outside because they would have, got, think about their school day, you know, they probably would have gone outside for recess. So take, them, take lunch out in your backyard or on your balcony or go take the walk make sure after school they get outside. You know, we kind of push our kids every day, find something to do outside, you know, as long as the weather, you know, allows you to. And then back to their, their space, their workspace, there's some other tricks that, easy tricks we can use, such as, uh, you know, let's say they have a 10 minute break between classes. I know my kids have that a lot from their online classes. You know, they could put on some relaxing nature music. And that also helps a tremendous amount of, in the evening before bedtime as well. I know that if I'm feeling kind of revved up, if I can put on some chirping birds or, you know, the, the, the waves crashing or whatever it is, it really just soothes you. And there's so much science to back that up as well. So, you know, some kids may like visuals. Some kids may like the sounds. Uh, they might like to read. They could also read some nature poetry or stories, whether they've written or, or other books that they found. And I just recommend getting a few real books <laughs> to give them that 
<laughs> electronic break, the screen break. It's always nice to go to your local library. And um, yeah, those were the main, the main ways that you can really change up their space in a more positive nature filled way. And they're, they're real easy to do. And I, I'm with you um, getting real books that, that makes a huge difference because the electronics just hyper stimulate our brains so much that they actually are counterproductive. But taking that break and music definitely is a great way to do that. Or even like you said, if it's a 10 minute break, just put on some music and get up and move around. It's just simple things that we can do to help with this process. So I really appreciate all of those simple tips. So before we wrap up, I have a question for you. What is one system or routine in your life or your business that you can't live without? Everyone gets stumped with this one, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the first thing that popped in my mind. I didn't have any prep for this. And it's probably the, not the healthiest system, but the first thing I like to do when I sit down at my desk or even believe it or not, when I'm laying in bed still in the morning and I like to go through Facebook and I do a little bit of work through my Facebook because a lot of the way I connect to my audience is through Facebook groups. And I, you know, have to, I'll post my bl latest blog post or if it's a special day, you know, there's all these little special days, you know, uh, ocean day or whatever it is. And so I'll, I'll, you know, want to bring that a post to the, to these, their attention to their screen. So I go through that. And even though it's sort of a little bit of a procrastination tool, because it's, you know, they say you're supposed to start with the hardest thing of the day. It, that doesn't work for me because I'm not, I'm not a morning person. So I need to kind of warm up. So I warm up with my Facebook, a little bit of Twitter and that, that helps me. And I feel like that, um, I also find a lot like how I connected with you. If I don't read the Facebook, I, I feel like I would miss out on a lot of connection. I've been able to take incredible you know, free online summits and other trainings. I've connected with incredible people on podcasts and whatnot, new books that are out. So it is, it's a routine in my business that I, I still stand behind. <laughs> And hey, the motto is do what works for you. So if that works with you, if it's not broke, don't fix it. <laughs> so right. it's great. As long as I don't spend three hours doing it. <laughs> exactly. That Put the boundary on it and make sure it doesn't take control of your entire morning. That That's okay. So now remind us again where our listeners can find you online. And of course, I'm going to put a, the links to everything in the show notes. Right. Um, so I would invite everyone to go to happysciencemom.com. And actually on my homepage, if you scroll down a little bit, I have a free eco happiness challenge calendar. So you can download that um, for free and it will give you 30 days of ideas and inspiration to start your own nature habit in your family. So all kinds of ideas, whether it's going on a nature poetry walk or taking nature photography. And um, it actually stems back from on Friday, March 13th, when everything shut down, when the pandemic kicked off, I began a, one, it turned out to be a 100 day personal eco happiness challenge where I posted every day what I was doing and connecting to nature. And so I kind of took the highlights from that and I put it in this calendar and I hope that, you know, we can use it all the time, not just during a pandemic. That's, no, for sure. that's great. And the good thing with creating habits is even you know, years from now, when this is all over, if we cultivate the habits now, we'll continue to do it even into the future because it's always going to be beneficial um, to help us with reducing stress and just being more productive. And that's what this is all about. So thank you again for sharing the, the information with us, Sandy. I think these are some great tips that all of us could take at least one thing away from this to kind of bring science and nature into our everyday living environment, which will help us be, you know, more productive and generate those happy thoughts and happy feelings. Thank you again for joining us. Thanks so much for having me, Shannon. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed my chat with Sandy and you were able to get some tips to help you incorporate nature and science into your home 
and your workspaces so that you can boost everyone's productivity, reduce the stress levels, and build some nature habits so that everyone is healthier, calmer, and happier. Now you can find a link to Sandy's blog and her eco happiness challenge in the show notes. And if you enjoyed listening to the show, please be sure to subscribe in your favorite podcast platform. Now, if you learned something new, please let me know. Take a screenshot, post it in Instagram stories, and tag me at the more than capable mompreneur, or feel free to DM me with your favorite tip. And remember, you are more than enough. And until next time, keep calm and streamline.